if you're lucky enough to get bread from a bakery like this, you might have a deeper connection with bread, but otherwise the process of bread baking means nothing to most of society today. And the question is, is that the kind of world that we want to live in? One in which we don't really know how the food that we consume is made. We don't know anything about it. We don't know the challenges uh, that are faced with it. We don't understand why people choose to eat rye bread, for instance. So you eat wheat and the loaf of bread is soft and kind of mild in flavor. Uh, it's easy to eat. And then you go and eat a dense loaf of hearty rye. And the first time you ever eat rye, if you're not from some Northern European country that taught you to love rye from infancy, you wonder why would anybody trade this for what I believe to be actual bread. I don't think anybody in society a couple hundred years ago would have understood why we're eating rye. It would have been very clear. Well, the wheat crop failed for that year and rye was the backup. And you know, a wheat crop failing was actually a really common problem. So has anybody ever asked the question of one of their food producers of whether the flour that they're growing or the wheat that they're using is free of glyphosate or Roundup? It's a legitimate question. No one wants to eat Roundup. We all know that, that Roundup is linked to a bunch of detrimental effects, but why is a wheat crop sprayed with Roundup in the first place? Well, it's because for so much of human history, we experienced wheat crop failure after wheat crop failure after wheat crop failure, and we had to switch to rye on the fly or buckwheat or one of the other alternative grains that you can bake with. Why does wheat fail? Well, during its maturing time in the field, it starts to get golden. And it's kind of, it's in this maturing stage of its, uh, of its life and it's during that stage that it can prematurely get water into it through heavy rainfall and begin to sprout and once the wheat sprouts it's no good to the farmer they can no longer just plow it down normally mill it into flour now it's trying to grow a new wheat crop so People spray glyphosate or Roundup on their wheat to desiccate it so that basically it has no life with which to sprout into a new life form. And so you're eating dead bread. Um, before it ever even made it to the baker, it was already dead. Um, that's one of the problems uh, that, that we face today. People aren't eating rye because they don't really need to eat rye because the wheat crop never fails because we have, you know, technology that like Roundup to desiccate crop. Now come to Arizona and it's a little bit of a different story. Our dry climate is pretty well suited for the production of wheat. Wheat's not one of those crops that needs too much water through its, uh, through its life in the ground. So a little bit of flood irrigation a couple times during the growing season seems to do the trick. And then since harvest for wheat here happens in June, we're pretty safe during that golden stage of the wheat uh, growth that it's not gonna rain. This is kind of a dry period for us where everybody else is raining right now. We're not really gonna get our heavy rains until July. So farmers in Arizona can grow wheat glyphosate free with less risk. Not all of them do, because some of them are so used to growing wheat the way everybody else grows wheat, but there's enough people growing wheat glyphosate free in Arizona that our stone mill was able to make enough relationships to make flour that's Arizona grain that has not been sprayed with Roundup. 